The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 29th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, TV Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just inside that heading, put a radio show question. And, of course, inside the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Turnaround Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trade up 18 points at 21,827. S&P is flat at 2444. NASDAQ 100 up 21 points. 5858 is the number of sheets printing. Russell 2000 up two points, 1384. Semis are up a point. Uh, you've got the trannies up 52. The trannies up 52. Uh, we might have to go take a look at those. Gold is up $5. Silver is up three pennies. Light sweet crude down 40 cents, 42 cents. Uh, you've got uh, leading the charge, the upside. It is Priceline up nine bucks, trading at $17.99. Uh, Puma Biotech up eight fifty five. dollars Amazon up eight. Uh, Juno Therapeutics up six. Google's up six. United Rentals up four. To the downside, you've got uh, Best Buy, BBY off seven bucks, Helen of Troy down seven, Lending Tree off about seven, uh, Corda Therapeutics down about seven, Jerwin Williams not down seven, but four dollars and forty cents. That's about one point three tenths of a percent to the downside. So where do we begin? We have a few questions that have come in, but let's go ahead and take those questions. Thus far, during the break, let's go take a look at what the markets are doing, why they're doing it, where they're headed to, all of those things. Now, many of you might have actually, at uh, last night when you saw futures trade down 100 points, uh, might have said, you're going to lick your chops and you're going to go short first thing this morning. And if you did that, uh, not the right move to make. And you would have known that. You certainly would have known that if you're a subscriber of Mastering Probability. You would have known that if you were trading this pattern out here. Just take a look at that 30-minute chart here for the ES Mini. Here we can see, let me get the crosshair out here. We can see the immediate move lower, the gap down when the futures contract began trading again last night. After the uh, missile going over Hokkaido, how can that be? Hokkaido produces, well, first it produces the best uni in the whole world, sea urchin. The best. If you've never had Hokkaido uni, folks, you're not living out there. So we don't want to see any more missiles splashing off into the ocean in the Hokkaido area. But what we can see here, we had that big thrust to the downside. And what took place overnight at about 5.30 this morning was you had that final push lower. That's where Stevie's black diagonal line automatically draws on my chart out here. I don't draw this. This is the system that I've set up to be able to help us identify when that rubber band gets stretched too far in one direction or the other. And then you had the cavalry arrive. It wasn't anything that took place at 9.30. All this took place at 5.30 in the morning. Of course, we then see price on the very next trading session get above your favorite red line and mine. That's Stevie's red line out there. That really cemented that there was going to be a move higher up into at least resistance, which was the 
where that market opened last night, the beginning of that falling window out here. You can see the next level of resistance is where we're trading into right now. That was the low of yesterday's uh, closing session out here. So we know that price is trading into resistance as we speak right now. If price begins to pull back from here, you'll be watching Stevie's red line again. Currently priced at 24.36. Now, can price continue to move higher out here inside the S&P? So, as I uh, indicated to newsletter subscribers this morning, no, this is not the time to go short. If anything, it was the time to go long the markets. Now, that's bored out to be true. But let's go take a look at, did we go long? No, we didn't. We didn't because I don't think that we've had the type of bottom that we're looking for. Intraday, this is a trader's paradise out here. It's a whole different story. If we take a look at where the resistance levels are inside of the ES Mini, it's pretty clear. It's pretty evident. It's going to be Stevie's red line on the daily charts out here. Now, that's priced at about the 24. Let me see if I can get it exactly as we speak right now. It's priced at 24.49.67. It's not going to hit that, but 24.49, we'll call it 24.50 out here, which also is the uh, top of the uh, daily TAS market profile out there. So that becomes your resistance zone. Is it possible that price is going to clear that level? Of course it's possible. If it does clear that level, well then, at 5.30 this morning, that was the bottom. That was the buying opportunity. That was what's going to go ahead and take the markets back up to the highs. But not so fast. We're not there just yet. I don't want you to jump on the long train right now. doesn't make sense. You've got seven points to the upside. Nor do I want you to jump on the short trade right now. If you are short, you've got to anticipate. You've got to put your stop somewhere above 24.50 out here. And we'll go take a look at uh, some other tools maybe to assist us with that. If we take a look at what was going on inside of the NQ, you've got Apple up a buck three, trading out at 162.48, but it wasn't really Apple that moved the markets. It was the same set of tools out here that you and I look at, price moving lower, doing less relative energy, the bulls run in. Here you've got the A to B equals CD to the downside as well. We'll go ahead and draw that in on our chart. You can see the one to one A to B equals CD. When price gets down there, you know as well as anybody that you start looking for a reversal signal here you have two patterns that actually form out there and that initial push lower and what i did put in the newsletter this morning for subscribers was expect anticipate that at the open you would see a push lower in the markets and that's what we saw in fact price went down and they tested tested stevie's red line nice wide ranging bar from there so where is it that the nq is headed to again we're just simply going to go back and take a look at Stevie's red line on the daily charts out here. And that line is not that much further ahead. It's at about the 5870 level, so about another 16 points or so uh, to the upside. So that is a possibility. Do you need to close above Stevie's red line in order for this market to turn bullish? Yeah, I would say so. Now, inside the NQ, it's a slightly different story. And so I we'll want to pay attention to the NQ. And the reason why it's a different story and the reason why you wouldn't have wanted to have sold at the open today. And I, I, I sure as hell hope that uh, heck hope that you didn't out there. And if you did subscribe to my newsletter service out there, because it'll it'll save your tuchus, if you know what I mean. If you take a look at what the ES Mini was also doing, that's the upper left-hand chart out there. Push it right down into the Taz Daily Profile Low. Remember, this is a bullish structured box out there. That's why 2450 is not out of the equation. But can the NQ even get above 5872? It's possible. Doesn't look likely. Steve Roach with TM We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up about 10. S&P is off one point. Let's go to some of our questions, and we can go back to the market. And, and I want to answer everybody, everybody that takes the time to go ahead and write in, call in, uh, post something inside the Tiger's Den. I certainly want to make sure that we get to each and every one of those requests. One came in late yesterday afternoon from uh, James, and he wanted to take a look at ticker symbol AVGO. So let's begin our uh, second session by doing just that. Now, uh, Avco Broadcom Limited, uh, AVGO is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And the question was looking for a uh, long position, I believe, or the question was um, it's trading below 247 what to do now out here and as we take a look at these are the three different time frame task market profile charts for us so you've got the daily on the left you have the uh, weekly in the center and you've got the monthly chart to the right hand side so it always depends on what your what your strategy is what's your length of time that you're taking to look at the equity for example on the right hand side if we take a look at avgo uh, we don't have any type of bearish reversal signal out here yet you know, the markets can continue to rise will continue to rise or continue to move lower until you see either a bear or a bull signal and on a monthly chart, if you were long Avgo, there is no reason for you to sell that position. Now, we'd want to go take a look at some other charts, see if price is moving higher, doing less relative energy, although there's not a bearish reversal signal yet. So I don't even have to do that, nor do you. We could go take a look and see what wave count it might be in. But until we see a bearish reversal signal, it doesn't mean much to us. On a weekly time frame out here, James. Uh, this equity is trading right now down at the uh, point of control, the center of the uh, box, which is slightly closer to the top of the box than it is to the uh, bottom. Let me get rid of there's a other thing on there. And uh, so this will not have changed trend on an intermediate term time frame until it were to close below the bottom of the weekly box. Presently, that's at 23081. Now, 23081, that would be a good or might be a good buy point. What you'd be watching for on a weekly basis is for price to come down into that level with less than 10.1 million shares on a weekly time frame. That would be the test of that uh, swing point. 
Now let's go take a look at the daily chart because I believe your email was more or less really referencing the daily time frame out here. And what we can see that took place yesterday was a close below that bottom of the box out there. So you certainly didn't want to see that. But what also is taking place right now is a test of the daily swing point from August the 11th. That had 1.6 million shares. You've already done 1.9 million shares out here. Just because the candle's green does not mean that it's a bullish signal. In this case here, it most certainly is not. So what AVGO is likely to do is at least go test the low of August 11th. That would be 238.70 out there. Because you're barreling in with volume, if in fact you see a close below that 238.70, well, then that brings in play the uh, weekly time frame out here. So, you know, have a stop in place on your trade. Make sure that you get your time frame horizon, because I don't know which one it is that you're looking at. This has not really broken down on the weekly. It has most certainly set up some resistance level but support would be 23081 so uh, James thanks for writing in and I hope that that assists you inside that trade and if it doesn't just write back and we'll make sure that we give you the information you're looking for Phil wanted to take a look at uh, snap crackle and a pop out he's looking at the uh, snap or isn't snap long snap this is trading at uh, 1498 now brand new profile here on the daily box so we'll go from really there's no reason for you and I to go look at the monthly chart out here there's no profiles there hasn't been enough time there's no reason for us to look at the weekly chart with regard to profiles although from a weekly perspective you had a key reversal week. That was the week that began August 14th. We can see how the body of that candle completely engulfs the prior weekly body. And you can see how the intra-week high and low of the prior week were exceeded. So in this case here, there certainly is an A to B equal CD to the downside that has completed inside of snap, crackle, and pop. And that's going to give you the... Well, I was going to try to draw that in there. The A point out here from its all-time high. The uh, B point down. Wow, that's really weird. It's not letting me do it. Oh, well, we we can visually see the A to B equals CD to the, uh, to the uh, downside that has completed. Now, here's what I want you to really pay attention to, Phil. And here's where you're going to probably get the most amount of information released to you. And that is this. I'm going to go ahead and turn price off. So let's do this. Let's turn off the price. You're going to say, how, if you turn price off, how in the heck can you give me information? Well, it's very simple. If we just go ahead and use these profiles, you'll see there's a brand new profile that formed yesterday. And what I want you to notice about this profile is at the center of the box at 1448, is very close or much closer to the top of the box than the bottom. This says 1505 is a significant resistance level. So what you want to see is you want to see price close above 1505. If it does that, then that would be an indication on a daily basis that we've seen a change in trend. And that's what you want to see. And if it doesn't do that, well, 1448 becomes a number. I believe your stop was down below 1295 on your trade. I most certainly agree with that because that's the below the bottom of that uh, daily box out here. Here we go ahead and we turn price on. And what you'd be watching for on any kind of a move lower inside of Snap, you would certainly be watching for that key reversal session, by the way, on a daily chart as well, which was August the 14th. And you don't want to see volume picking up, which means in the 85 million million or more phase as it uh, did on August 14th. I'm not saying that that's where price is going to head to. But what we can say is this is up. Snap is up against a significant resistance area. And if it can clear this level, then I would say, where is the next area? We'll go ahead and turn off those TAS profiles. Where is the next level? Just by looking at this chart where Snap is going to find resistance. Come on, all of you can do this. You know that you can do this. Exactly. You are exactly correct. It would be where this last broke down, and that was the gap. Gaps are our friends, both to the upside and to the downside. And so what we would know is if the snap can get above that, what is it, 1502 or 4, something like that, then what you would anticipate is price would make a run to 1636 to 1695. Ideally, what you'd like to see is a run up there with more than 41 million shares. There are a lot of people. There are a lot of traders that bought Snap on July 11th and maybe bought it as it was moving lower that are just sitting here saying, Phil, 
If I could only get my money back, why was I buying Snap then? So watch for that area if, in fact, you can get Snap on a daily basis to close above that Taz daily profile of 1505. I wasn't right on either of those guesses out there. We also had our good friend Tom write in and ask about the TVIX. Now, we talked about that yesterday. Looks like we're going to really have to do that when we get back from this breakout here. But remember, when you're trading an instrument, an ETF, an ETN, as this one is, TVIX is on the left-hand side. You really want to know what instruments are are contained inside there. In this case here, it's the futures contract. It's both the September, as you and I discussed yesterday, September, and the October contracts out here. September has a 61% weighting, or it did as of last night, meaning a 39% weighting inside of the October contract. Unfortunately, what you're looking at here on my screen is a set of futures contracts with a 10-minute delay out here. But I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna show Tom Maybe a set of the tools that you can use for your intraday trading on these volatility products. See you with TFN. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 28 uh, points out here. So let's go to uh, take a look at um, uh, a trading strategy. Now, this was something that I uh, had developed and had to uh, brush off uh, back in the days when they used to do the show out of the uh, Clearwater office out here. And so uh, yeah, I went back, went back and took a look at it. And, and Tom, or, or anybody that is trading these different vehicles, here is the uh, TVIX as an example and now this we'll just take a look at today's charts and albeit just a, a two minute time frame that we're looking at it's a beauty of a two minute time frame and the utilization of these uh, task market profiles and just how well they can work for you and if you trade these vehicles out here then my suggestion is you go buy this product you go subscribe to for example uh, e-signals uh, software and uh, you go uh, ahead and you purchase this set of tools out here uh, because it will more than pay for um, your cost of all those subscriptions out here if you just simply follow the uh, these guidelines. Now, the best thing to do is to try to avoid days when you have just this little sideways movement out there. But on days like today and last night when you've got such volatility, volatile events that are inside the marketplace, it's just simply um, priceless with regard to the information that it provides you. And you just simply have to use a very simple trading strategy. And that is you'd simply use the top and the bottom of these boxes to help identify when there's changes in trend or potential changes in trend inside these vehicles. Now, we could put the volume out metrics out here so uh, I'll, well, I will come back to that because you can trade this you can certainly trade the strategies without those volume metrics so for example Tom um, if you had been a subscriber to my newsletter service or you knew you knew that price was moving lower doing less relative energy that you had a reversal um, already that had formed at five o'clock this morning that would be communicating to you that the uh, volatility of the TVIX as an example would likely begin to start trading lower out here. Um, so what's the opposite of this? It's SVXY? Is that, what, what, which one is it? I'm going to just leave TVIX because, it, in essence, it just works the opposite way. You would know how to go ahead and trade that other vehicle out here. And what, you would, what you're looking for is you're looking for whether or not price is going to take out a previous or, or take out a current TAS market profile high. Here is the 930 open inside of this vehicle. Again, two-minute charts out here. And what I want you to notice is price has never closed above a top of the box out here well not until we started to get down into this very tiny small box out here that formed at 1234 um, this afternoon and you know what you really love to see you and I have taken a look at this I'm gonna go ahead and turn price off because there's just so much information that we can glean by looking at these different profiles out here for example take a look at this profile that formed at 1016 between 1016 and 1036 what you and I know is that this profile has a bullish structure to it what do you mean jelly bean I mean that the center of the box which in this case here we're looking at the light blue line is closer to the bottom or the green that says that uh, buyers and sellers that buyers are the ones in control of this price area and should be able to get price up into about the 1854 level we'll go ahead and turn price back on never happened in fact what you saw at the exact time frame of 10:30 this morning you saw the bottom of that box fail now there's nothing more bearish than a failed bullish pattern you know that and as soon as price closed below that box, it was releasing a ton of information to you. Likewise, this box had formed here at 1048. So between 1048 and 1114, this was in effect. What do we know about the top of this box? This was a bearish structured box. This says that sellers should really be in control. That price should not close above the top of the box. Looks like about 1794. And so let's go ahead and turn price back on. Price certainly never got up there. It did its thing out here. And so just simply an invaluable tool, Tom, or anybody that are trading these vehicles out here to be able to assist you with your trading. I went ahead and use this for uh, gold inside the tiger's den there was a kind of a, a brief uh, period of time where where i was able to go ahead and post some charts to the folks in the den and what i was paying attention to was really a couple of things one of the things that i've shared with you in the past is the the trading desk theory now this is a two minute chart here for gold and my theory is i can't prove it but i have a lot of confidence in it
is that when you see a linear move, I'm right now where my cursor is at is at 930. So I'm just looking at the uh, opening, the New York Stock Exchange opening, the NASDAQ Stock Exchange opening. And what we can see here is that price on a two minute basis went ahead and ran smack dab right into the top of that box. Now, was that a point in time to give you a sell signal? The answer is no, it wasn't. In fact, you don't know that there's a trading desk on board here probably until about the, uh, I'd say about 11 o'clock time frame. Because what we're looking at here, in my opinion, what we're looking at here is just simply a trading desk. You see a linear move. What do I mean a linear move? I mean, you could just simply draw an arrow if you wanted to. It's somebody just simply, and you can see it's not letting anything get out of control. It is somebody that is liquidating a position. Somebody liquidating a position. Hmm, something to think about. Why would anybody be liquidating a position with regard to gold when everybody is so certain that gold broke out and that gold is heading to higher highs out there? Why would anybody? Well, it, let's not answer that question because we can't, because there are reasons. I can't give them to you if you have that belief. But if you don't have that belief and you believe that gold actually maybe um, – had a false breakout, just saying, maybe had a false breakout, and that's what your belief was, well, then as you were unloading your contracts, you wouldn't really want anybody to be able to play your cards. You ever play Texas Hold'em, or you ever watch Texas Hold'em, or you ever talk about guys that say they can read the other players, right? You're playing the player, not the cards out here. Well, here, this is playing the players. Now, the beauty is, you don't even have to prove my theory. All you have to use is Tom's two-minute profiles out here, the TAS profiles, and just take a look and see whether or not price is able to get above the top of those boxes. And the answer is no, it wasn't able to. The first time that that occurred was right here at 102 this afternoon. Now, the bummer with regard to a potential change in trend out here is we haven't seen that stair-step approach. We haven't seen that stair-step approach on a two-minute basis out here. So there's not a whole lot of conviction thus far that, in fact, uh, gold, which came down to one of its gaps out here. If we pull this back, you're just looking at those yellow lines. Here is where gold gapped last night because of uh, Kim Jong-un's move, because of uh, nuclear, well, potentially, it was just simply missiles at this stage of the game, right? It wasn't anything nuclear. It wasn't nuclear tip. Still a problem. Still a major problem. We're not going to talk about politics. We just want to talk about trading the politics and what's going on here. Of course, the question that I really posed is here. I pulled this back. This is the question that I posed. Because what we know is gold had been moving sideways for quite a period of time. And everybody was making the uh, assumption that gold broke out yesterday as it got above 1307. Even I probably said those specific words. But what I didn't do was come back and take a look at a short-term chart and try to figure out what really happened yesterday. There was one large buy during this two-minute time frame. It was about how many contracts out here? 13,000? Something like that. 18, 13, 13,947 contracts. That was a big volume. Price might be pulling back to that area. 1303. That would be a false breakout. Steve Rhodes. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, the 800th edition of The Gold Report will be published next Monday. To celebrate the last 15 and a half years of calling the gold market, I'm doing a special promotion. You can receive 60 weeks of The Gold Report for only $600. That is $10 a week, which is a savings of 50% off the regular price. If you want to understand the entire supply and demand equations that move the gold market, including where the XAU, HUI, and mining equities are looking to trade, if you want to understand the correlation between the dollar, the yen, the South African rand, bonds, and gold, the gold report is for you. I'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop for each equity, ETF, future, or option trade. The gold report is a long-term newsletter with a focus on building real wealth to a successful portfolio of gold and silver equities. You can take advantage of this special promotion until August 27th. That's 60 weeks of the gold report for $600, which is a 50% savings. Go to the front page of TFNN.com or call 877-518-9190 and order now. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. If we stick with that uh, gold here, let me get rid of that uh, little butterfly uh, pattern out here. It would be a butterfly sell, by the way. Um, you've got the uh, real struggle going on today between the bulls and the bears. Because as we speak right now at 142, you've got a shooting star candle, right? The exact opposite of a hammer candle, only this case at the end of a potential trend to the upside. But you also have a gap. Right, so we know that uh, silver or gold had gapped up. So we have both the again the struggle between which one is which one is the uh, correct uh, candle. Now, unfortunately, 142 is not the time frame to call the uh, daily candle formation out here. But just simply going to go ahead and point out really the similarities between it and a reversal signals and candles inside of the yen. So if we take a look at the yen as we uh, speak right now. We can see that the yen is in wave number seven. It's trading right at Stevie's red line, uh, slightly below that. If it trades just slightly lower, uh, what you're going to have is some type of uh, piercing candle, some type of bearish reversal signal. So watch the Yap uh, Japanese or Japanese yen future and uh, watch to see how that trades for the rest of the day out here. And then go back and take a look at the candle formation inside of uh, gold because they will be providing us with a lot of information. And you've got to ask yourself this question. Look, you don't have to. I would suggest that you do that. Knowing the, knowing the similarities, knowing the correlation between the two, if gold really broke out and you fired a missile over Hokkaido, why aren't yen futures breaking out? Why aren't yen futures breaking out? That's the question. Hey, we'll have the answer, I'm sure, in a couple of days out here. I could just simply be full of it because there is a lot of truth to that uh, statement. But you and I, we're just simply taking a look at the charts out here. And we're following along the charts and the chart patterns. We're willing to go ahead and take all the information in that we can in order to make our decisions about what is it that the markets are communicating to you and I. Now, if you caught this segment that I did with uh, Tom last night, what I suggested to you was, is that we were going to see the price oscillator. That's the uh, second panel on my screen out here. Right now, printed out at 0.414. Earlier in the session, as you can imagine, earlier in the session, it was down at that zero line. 
And what I suggested was we're waiting, we, meaning subscribers, money, and mine, we're waiting to see what happens. First, we're waiting for the S&P 500 to get down to that uh, price oscillator, to that zero line for the price oscillator. Now, it's close enough for me. If we finish here, does it have to get to exactly zero? No, and considering it was down there earlier in the session, I'm not going to worry about it. We're close enough. Which really just simply means you and I, like a hawk, need to watch Stevie's red line, 2449. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to head lower and that we're not going to go ahead and get down to the zero line. Whether we do or we don't doesn't mean as much right now as to whether or not price is able in the S&P 500 cash indice is able to close above Stevie's red line. Because if it does close above Stevie's red line, that actually would be a signal to you and I that price is now. We, we have a Gartley buy pattern. You know, we have a test of a swing point out here. I believe it was even with lighter volume. Uh, so we have all the makings of a market that wants to go ahead and move higher. I'm not buying it. I will not buy it until we see price close above that 2440. Now, it might be 2452 tomorrow or 53 on the next day. And if you want to know what those lines are, well, then what you want to do is you just simply want to come on over and uh, check out Mastering Probability. And the question that is posed is why is zero on the price oscillator pivotal, pivotal, pivotal? I know I can say it, pivotal to you. And the reason is, is because when you are above the price oscillator, when you're above zero out here, any kind of pullbacks may just simply be a retracement. So it always depends on your time frame horizon. So let's say you were making a decision on your portfolio, but it was really intermediate term decisions on a portion of your portfolio. And you started to see price trade below Stevie's red line. That means the price oscillator is falling and you're above zero. Would you go ahead and dump your portfolio? Not if you were long term long-termish investor out here, what you'd really be looking for is if you had money on the sidelines, you would be looking for being able to go ahead and put that money to work again. If I pull the S&P 500 back a little further, maybe I have that done somewhere else. Do I? Nah, I probably don't out here. Let me answer it. Let me do this on this uh, chart. So let me get rid of one of my indicators out here just so we can just so that we can focus just on that specific question. Oh, it's right over here is where I've got to go ahead and get rid of the come on workforce. So I'm going to get rid of something so that I can answer that question real clearly. Um, where is it? Move that, remove that, uh, hit apply. OK, perfect. OK, so so now oh, let me just do one more. Um, Shoot. Let me just let me do this too. Let me get rid of a bunch of a bunch of things on here just simply so that we're just looking at really the important elements of being able to answer that question out here. Let's do that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. And uh, here we go. So now we're just going to really be looking at two tools out here. Now, what I want to also do is I want to go ahead and I want to add some more time uh, to this chart so we can go back and we can really take a uh, look at it. And we're going to go take a look at other price behavior right around the zero area. So go with this theory. There's nothing more bullish than a rising price oscillator above zero. That's a bottom panel. And there's nothing more bearish than a falling price oscillator below zero. Now, what you have to remember is this is not a tool to be able to identify the top tick or the bottom tick. That's not what this tool is. This is a great momentum tool. This is a great change in trend tool. Now, when the market hasn't changed its trend and is moving sideways, there aren't a whole lot of great tools out there other than your eyes to identify that you're moving sideways. And if we take a look at coming back here, the last time that we dealt with the zero area, let me go ahead and write a uh, right out here. Here is the actual uh, date. You can see right here the date, by the way, I'll do a little red arrow, November the 15th. That's when the price oscillator gets above zero. Now, the normal price behavior when that happens is you're going to see price and Stevie's red line catch up to each other. And it's when that occurs that you start that you then be able to get your next interpretation of what the market is doing.
Now, in this case right here, price pulled back on the trading day of December 11th. This is where things uh, went ahead. And uh, and, and now normally when you see that, when you see that price also you get to zero, you normal, normally see the momentum of the market start to wane a, bit, a little bit. And we didn't really move substantially higher from the point that that occurred, which was at about 2180, until we saw that price catch up with each other, which was 2191, 10 points on a 2000 instrument. That's really nothing out here. It was on this trading session right here on December 5th when price was able to get above Stevie's red line. That was your buy signal inside of the S&P 500. Let me take a look at this with you here. Let me take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. So I give you a really a feel for where it is that we are at. And what you can see in the New York Stock Exchange out here, oh, we'll have to do it when we get back from break. You can see that right now we are down below zero. So our next test, to the extent that you use the New York Stock Exchange to figure out what the market is doing out here, would come at 11,813. I ask you the question, when the price oscillator was below zero in the bear market from 2007 to 2009, what was it below zero or above zero? He wrote, yeah. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. So we had a question that came in, and so let me just finish this off because we've got the old two-minute drill here. And I've taken you back to the New York Stock Exchange. Just before we went to break, we what you and I noticed was that price oscillator is now down below zero. And so we're waiting for the test of Stevie's red line out here. Now, if I take you back into the 2008 time frame, we're going to see that the price oscillator test of that zero line came on June the 10th, 2008. As I say, once that occurs, you're going to see a test of Stevie's red line, the oscillator and change line, and price. That is exactly what took place out here on the trading day of June 17th. It was a test and it was a rejection. The rejection meant that the price oscillator was falling below zero after a test. That was a failed test. Now, throughout that entire time period in June of 2008, all the way until the time period here of April, April 1st, 2009, this was telling us, this was telling you that any bounces that came in were nothing more than little counter trend rallies. Again, this is not going to sell the top tick. This is not going to buy the bottom tick out here. But it's a really great trend base tool out here, especially when there is a trend that is in effect. Fast forward to where we're at today. We're going to wait to see inside the New York Stock Exchange. Hey, nice little bounce that we've seen here today. Right. And if you just take a look at the last time when price got above that price last there, November 16th, uh, November 16, 2016, this, in essence, would have you in a long position. You get a little bit concerned back here on the trading day of April 19th. But um, right here on the trading day of uh, May 4th, it would have given you your add to your position out here. So if price is able to get above 11, 8, 13, 50 inside the New York Stock Exchange, it's simply going to go ahead and give you a buy signal inside of the market. The last question was Apple. What is Apple doing? Oh, real quickly, can I get there? Oh, where's that chart? Three time frames. We'll put Apple in here. I apologize. We'll go take a look at it tomorrow. Too long-winded. Look, Apple's above the daily top of the box, the weekly, the monthly top of the box. Apple wants to continue moving higher. Folks, have a great day. Stay tuned. David White is up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5, Andy Heck from 5 to 6. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.